Good afternoon and welcome to Paul T's World. Now, it's a long time since I've said that, isn't it? In fact, June last year. And thank you very much indeed for all your support and requests on when I'm doing another video. Well, I'm doing another video right now. And so let's see how it goes. And in this first video of 2022, we're going to look at the front garden. I will, as per usual, give a relaxed tour of the garden, showing the plants that I've got in the garden. Uh, some of the plants are the same. There will be some plants in the garden that you won't have seen before. Maybe you don't even know them because some of them are new to me. So I'm quite excited about this year as I've got quite a lot going on. So let's just have a look at the front garden. That also has had a little bit of a change. And this is the change. Now, do you remember from previous videos that all along here I had lavender? Do you remember those lavender videos? Well, I still do have lavender because I love lavender. However, I've decided to change this bed to an azalea and a hydrangea bed. In fact, they are all paniculata hydrangeas. But first of all, let's just have a little look at these azaleas. In actual fact, looking at this first azalea, I can see for the very first time in weeks, we've had rain in Britain. We've had a high over Britain, which has meant there hasn't been much wind, but indeed no rain. It's been a little bit cool at times with winds off the North Sea, because when we have a high over Britain, because a high goes clockwise, it drags down air from the North Sea. And so we have cold air coming in. But last night we actually had the first rain in a long time and I desperately needed it. So just to remind you, this is a third of an acre uh, garden including the house. It's on sand so it's really well drained. The soil warms up quickly but it doesn't hold moisture so it's bone dry very quickly. I'm right on the coast or near the coast in northwest England so the temperatures are very mild. We only had five nights of frost last winter. It was a mild winter all over Britain. And the frosts, I think minus two was the lowest we got. It's minus two centigrade. And I believe we are zone 9A here. But just looking at this azalea, look at this. I've only just noticed it now coming out of the house. It's all flopped. It's just not used to the rain. Look at this. They were all standing up nicely up to last night. And indeed this one here. So these hydrangeas I bought last year, some of them in, some of them in a garden centre and some of them in um, a supermarket type store. I think these were £6.50, end of the season, sort of autumn, selling them off cheap and some of the others further up there were £5.50 so it's a really good time in the autumn to buy azalea or in fact any plants that the uh, supermarkets are selling off cheaply. The bird we can hear in the background is a wood pigeon. Uh, we have a lot of wood pigeons in uh, the gardens in Britain now. They seem to like it here and they are the ones giving this sort of cooing noise. They are big uh, they're big birds and I don't like them walking over my plants at times because they can trample anything, these pigeons. So we'll just walk along and see the row of azaleas that I have planted. Here we are. This one was probably... No, actually, I did this one from a cutting myself. So that will take a few years to get going. That one was £5.50 from a supermarket. And these three here, one of them again flopping, that one flopping uh, through the rain, were the ones from a uh, garden centre, rather cheap. Now you'll see here I've got some um, twigs in front of the path here, or along the side of the path. 
and it's very thorny and I'll show you where it comes from. It comes from this Berberis here, very, very thorny. Actually, it's quite a nice Berberis, this. It turns a lovely red in autumn. But I use cuttings from this to put alongside the path here because the blackbirds and the cats and probably the fox they come looking for worms or whatever they're looking for and they put all this mulch on the path so I try and stop them by putting these in and in fact I just cut these little twigs off last year stuck them in to hold them uh, tight and look at this <laughs> I think it sent down roots so essentially I'm growing new plants here uh, don't look at all the weeds here because that's still got to be weeded along the edge the mulch is very thin here at the edge because as I say that's where the animals and the birds flick it away and so that's where I get the the weeds but I am using this bark now it's quite a heavy bark I buy it at a local garden centre large bags of about 60 litres that cost about um, £6.50 but you do get a lot of it so I'm trying to slow down the weeds oh and here oh it's a conker from a horse chestnut we don't have any horse chestnuts around here a squirrel I think has brought that and I think it actually was burying it down there Here are some, these are the wild uh, poppies that we saw some of those in a video last year. Uh, they're beautiful red, they grow about two feet high. They're the, oh, and now I've just forgotten the name of them. They're not the opium poppies, uh, but they're an or oriental type poppy. So I'll probably move them from there and plant them all up in the same place. So let's have a look at these paniculatas. Now I ordered from a specialist nursery uh, about seven, eight, might have been nine paniculatas, all of them different, and I decided to put them all along here. So let's have a look at them. This was last autumn, and this one here is, there we go, little quick fire. This is only grows to about here, so I built, oh, you can't see, about here. And it is very red. It's a really nice red one, that. And here we've got, I haven't got my glasses on. Oh, is this the framboise? The framboise, it grows a little bit larger. In fact, I'm struggling here. I'm gonna go and get my glasses. Oh yeah, that's better. These are um, reactor light glasses. Sometimes they go a little bit too uh, sunglassy-ish, even though it isn't sunny at the moment, but uh, at least I can see with them. I can read with them. So let's see what we've got here. So we have got the framboise there. And then the next one. Candlelight. All these are slightly different. Of course, they'll all have panicles on. Diamond Rouge. This one I actually planted and bought a year ago. That's a pink diamond. We'll have a look at that one there in a minute because that's a little bit special. In the bed here, I've put some hostas. And this one's starting to send up flower spikes already.
and I'm going to put more plants, maybe coleus and various other bright leafed plants here when they're out. Oh, this is a goliath. This one is going to be large. It's going to be a big one right at the front of the bed here. And the last one just along here. Um, I don't have the label, so I'll have to look that one up. These two are going to be really large. Now, if you'll remember when we were looking up the path from videos long ago, here was a really large uh, California lilac and next to it was a choicea right here. The whole of this bed. Now that the California lilac died and the choicea was getting out of control. And as you can see here, they were so large they were stopping the growth here, which is why it's a little bit bare there. And also, my wedding cake tree. It couldn't grow any tears on this side because of these large shrubs. So in some ways I'm quite happy to have dug them out and changed the bed into an azalea and hydrangea bed. Along with some hostas. Various hostas. I'll put some more in to fill the bed in a little bit. Oh, and this last one here. This is the biggie. This is, and I only discovered these last year, and this is an oak leafed hydrangea or oak leaf hydrangea. Because these leaves will grow massive. It does produce panicles. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like, but I feel it's going to fill this whole area. So I'm quite excited about that one. And just having a look at the other side of the bed here. This is similar to before with the candy tuft. Hasn't flowered greatly this year because I cut it right back and so it's just growing forward again. A nice bright coloured euonymus. A darker one. Now this is the potentilla which will flower with yellow flowers but um, it's not looking great and it's going to come out at some stage. And I think I will put a paniculata in there in its stead. This is the shocking pink lace cap hydrangea and here we have the variegated Wygela that's just starting with its first flowers. Now what I like about this Wygela is it is vigorous and so it's going to grow quite tall which is what I want. I want to disguise the top of the flat roof of this garage a little bit. So look how tall it's growing and I'll encourage it to grow even taller. So just to finish off what's happening along the pathway here, of course I've got the Cotoniaster horizontalis. Now these little flowers, the bees adore these flowers. Here I cut the candy tuft way back because I had some vinca growing amongst the uh, candy tuft. And the only way of getting rid of that vinca um, was to cut the candy tuft right back. In fact, I dug it out, I think, split it and then uh, planted it again. But it means it will take a year or two to get going properly. And in the meantime, I've got more of these large oriental poppies starting to grow. I'm going to try and move these and put them somewhere together. But what's interesting, we've got above, we've got the Cotoniaster horizontalis. And look what I can see here. 
Weeds, but are they weeds? I'm going to pop these up because these are seedlings. Because look at the leaves. The leaves are identical to the cotoneaster. So I'm going to pop those up and I'll have a lot of little cotoneasters. Got the Aubrecia here. I love the Aubrecia. The Pyrrhus is getting over now. Of course, it had the red leaves and the bells. Both over now, quite early in the spring. A red azalea behind. And another Aubrecia here. The two, well, I was going to say dwarf rhododendrons. They are dwarf rhododendrons, but look at the size of them. I didn't plant these. These were planted by the previous owner 20 years ago. And this one is already over. It's the first one to come out in the year, and this is still to come out. Now, the leaves do droop on this if it doesn't get water, so I'm really pleased it's rained. And then to finish off this upper terrace, we've got a yellow euonymus. So there is the new bed it's ready to flower. All those paniculatas will flower this summer. So there is a quick little video to show you what I'm doing in the front garden along the pathway. And I'll show you some of the other things that I'm doing in subsequent videos. So thank you for watching and I'm going to see you next time. Aren't I? Bye.